I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, you would be called a tucker. What characterises people from your part of the Netherlands? A uh, tucker also is um, a, uh, a people in the eastern of Holland and in the region Twente. Twente is um, a part uh, of Holland, but part also of Overijssel, so a bigger area, and that is also uh, in Holland. Um, I have to say, I have to correct myself, in the Netherlands, hein? because Holland, that is only Amsterdam, Rotterdam, Utrecht, Den Haag. Okay, and, and people from that part of the Netherlands, I read, doing my research, honest, determined, hardworking, humble, and everything I read about you, obviously we've only just met for the first time, you seem like a perfect tooker, maybe a stereotypical tooker. Is, is that fair? Uh, you did really well, your research. Huh? But I think it's true. Um, they are that modest, but also convinced, and they are determined, and it's especially they are uh, hard workers. And they are coming from, uh, in the past, industry, textile, and uh, after that, uh, when textile quits, it's more about innovation and in the region Twente, in Enschede, there's a highly um, uh, university and especially in uh, IT and they do some good stuff. Um, they, they, uh, they find out there and they uh, get it developed. Um, so, uh, but the background is and especially hard workers. So, so how much of what a person from that region is has helped you become a manager? You, you know, those qualities that were instilled in you by your parents, by the community, by the people from that region, how much has that helped you in what you've gone on to achieve? Oh, of course, where you get raised, you, you get a background. And as I just said, uh, it's uh, textile, the industry, uh, the hard working, and later on, the university, it's a good university, it's a famous university, and it gives the innovation, and yeah, that gives some tools uh, for a manager. So, what do the people from that area make of one of their sons being manager of one of the most famous football clubs in the world? What the people think? Yeah. What do, what do I don't know, you have to ask them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know, they're proud. <laughs> That is, what we will say is, uh, proud to be a Tucker. <laughs> That's, that is definitely a sentence, and it's a sentence in the stadium in uh, FC Twente and Chile, always. So, who were your footballing influences? Who made you want to be a, football, a footballer first, and then a, and then a coach? Uh, more influences, but I had a coach in that time, was a great coach, um, Kees Rijvers. He was, um, he, he's still alive. He's, in the, he's 90, he passed the 90, but he was a great player. Uh, when I'm talking about the 50s, about the 60s, he was playing in Holland, uh, but also in France. And uh, later on he was a, a big coach in FC Twente, Enschede, PSV, and also the Dutch squad. And, uh, but he was my coach when I was in the 23, and uh, he was a big influence on me. And of course, Johan Cruyff, uh, because I think uh, yeah, I think he changed his football. Is your football now, with your own sort of tweaks and changes, is it Cruyff football or is that the, does it start with Cruyff football at least? I think I definitely um, some uh, pieces are in it, eh? but football develops and go quickly. But what I just said, uh, Cruyff was one of the ones who always innovates the game and so that is what you have to do always. I think that is the lesson he gives us. Do you want to tell us about your first TV experience? Yeah, that was with Johan Cruyff. Huh? So what you also get from him is uh, proactive and play um, attacking football, uh, be brave. And yeah, I had the luck to have a TV experience when I was really young and yeah, that was a good experience and it gives us lessons for life. So, like, how on earth does that happen? So, well, firstly, how old are you? And secondly, how on earth does that happen when you're, I think, 10 maybe, and you're sat next to one of the great players of all time? I was a little bit, a little bit older, I think, so 13, 14. Right. Um, 
Yeah, but that is of course great uh, when you uh, when you are a kid and you only uh, know him from television. And in that time, television was uh, colors, just uh, but uh, you know uh, black and white colors uh, of black and white. And it's uh, fantastic that you are uh, next to him. You train with him. You can discuss with him. You can you, so you can ask him questions. That's great. Already at that age, so you say 13, 14, you, uh, towards the end of that show, you, you challenge him a little bit on how coaches should speak to young players. So maybe with the benefit of hindsight, do you think already then you had quite an analytical mind towards football? No, could be. And as a player, I was already um, a leader in, in my teams. I, I played in the midfield. Um, say in the central defensive holding midfield position and uh, I was often I was the connection to the coach I uh, transfer his thoughts into the team and also yeah, um, you could discuss with me about football and not only about my own position but uh, over the whole game. When did you start to think about being a coach and maybe that you could be a better coach than you were a player if you don't mind me saying that? Uh. That's not nice, uh, but, <laughs> <laughs> but as I said, as a player, I was already uh, thinking not only about myself, but I was thinking for the, for the whole team. But are you already thinking in your 20s, I could do this, I want to do this? I, when you are young, you, I think you would just play football because that is the most wonderful thing you can do. But once you quit, uh, so you start thinking, what then? Uh, and uh, the second best is to be a coach. So what type of player were you? I think I've only seen the best bits. And I see some, some hints of Ronald Koeman actually bringing it out. Uh, and there was a few long distance goals, more than most uh, defensive midfielders or centre back score. Yeah. So yeah, I played sometimes centre back, but I was definitely not a centre back. I wasn't that physical. But I, um, so uh, I, my uh, ability was th uh, thinking, strategist. I have to, uh, I, I had to play in the, in the centre of the park uh, to, to point the players and especially to, to link up. So your first two managerial jobs, Go Ahead Eagles and then Utrecht, both of those clubs, you raised the level. Go Ahead back to Eredivisie for the first time in 17 years. Utrecht back into Europe. You did that without huge budgets, without massive name players. No, your shit. Am I wrong? No, you are not wrong. Oh, I thought you were disagreeing with me. No. Okay, so the question is, how did you do that? I think both they have a connection with, with England uh, with, um, and Cohead Eagles already in the name. And yeah, they, it's um, a quite historical club in, in Deventer. And they didn't play in the highest league for 70 years. And it was quite a frustration, and you know, we turned around. And with, with young players, good mixture, with some experienced players, and especially, yeah, I already said, how I see football with uh, proactive, attacking, adventure, uh, be brave. And yeah, it was a really good season. Eh? And we didn't expect it to do it in one year. And, but we did it finally, because we constructed a team uh, in, in, a, in a way of play, but also it was really a good team, uh, really collective and really fight for each other. And in Utrecht, uh, it was more or less uh, the same. That we, uh, Utrecht is the fourth city of, of the Netherlands. And there were some seasons more down and yeah, we, we bring them back. Uh, we, we built a good uh, environment, a good culture and luckily uh, we, we get them back on track uh, um, and I'm still happy and satisfied that they are still there where we, we get them and I think they are now where, where they belong and now they can still hope for more. What is the key, whether it's Go Ahead Eagles or Utrecht or Ajax or, or Manchester United, what is the most important thing do you think in terms of turning a football team round, improving a football team. Is, is it spirit? Is it the work you do on the training pitch? Is it the transfer market? For, for you, what would it be? Uh, concept and hard work. <laughs> I think that are the two tools. 
uh, or the most important, but have a concept and on many issues, that is what you need. And for the rest, it's about hard working, togetherness. Because of the, we talked a lot at the start of the interview about the region, the part of the Netherlands you're from, because of that, a little bit of scepticism when you were first appointed Ajax manager, did you face a little bit of scepticism? Yeah, because when you are from a smaller club, you get appointed in a bigger club, uh, or, or say the biggest club in the Netherlands, and I think it's a, a, a brand also in the world. I, uh, Ajax bring up m many good teams, a uh, lot of successes, many, I think, famous players. And so um, when I get appointed, of course, there is uh, scepticism. And of course, uh, even more because I came from a region uh, from the Eastern. And yeah, in the Netherlands, they look um, uh, to them, uh, they look above them. And uh, we know that, but well, we are modest, we are humble, and we work hard and uh, we get our goals. Does the, the, maybe the proving people wrong that you did at Ajax, obviously dealing with a massive club, massive expectation, does that help you a lot now? Obviously you have that again now uh, at Manchester United? Yeah, this is next level, but I think um, a lot of similarities. And uh, what I say, Ajax is also it's a big club, a big club in Europe. Expectations, they are highly. And uh, my task was to bring Ajax back in Europe, Europe proof. I heard you say that in your last Ajax interview. Because you won a lot domestic, obviously you made a really um, dazzling, creative, exciting to watch team. But was that the, the, the absolute key for you to make Ajax a power in Europe again? Europe proof? Yeah, that was, my, that was my job to do. And um, when you see nowadays football, then is the Champions League is dominated by five big countries <laughs> and even more two uh, dictated everything. And that is uh, England, the Premier League and La Liga uh, by Munich. <laughs> And for smaller countries, it's almost impossible to get in between. And the only two countries who can are Portugal and is the Netherlands. Um, but in that time, we were far away. Huh? Um, Ajax didn't even play Europe the year before, not even Europa League. Huh? And so our job was to bring them back, and we did. And I think we constructed a team what get results, but also in a way, we did it, and it was really a team what uh, brings a certain vibe of, um, over in Europe, and yeah, we are really happy with that. So if the key, if, if the, the baseline was for Ajax was to make them Europe-proof again, what, what's, the, what's the baseline here at Manchester United? What's, what's the bare minimum, if you like? Uh, we know uh, Man United really are stand for, so that is... Uh, uh, trophies, huh? but in the moment uh, we are officially not there, but we have to get back there and that, um, that demands again concept, hard work and togetherness and if we get that in, uh, um, it's, uh, we're going to make it happen. You said earlier it was next level, even from a club as big as Ajax, so in your experience now, your, your pre-season, in what ways have you found it different? I think especially the fan base and uh, much more attention all over the world. Eh? So Man United is global, Ajax is global, eh? but Man United, the, the support uh, is huge and um, so that demands more. But I think um, in the end, the differences are not that big eh? because what I said before, the expectations uh, in Amsterdam are huge and Ajax is also in Europe, an established club, so the expectations also in Europe are huge. So, uh, in, that sense, um, in that sense, it's the same. These players have been criticised a lot over the last few seasons. You'll have seen that from afar. Are they capable of, of a, a modern Eric Ten Hag style of football, do you think, with, without loads of additions? Yeah, the criticism is, um, is part. It's part when you, uh, when you play football, uh, you have to deal with it and we're going to deal with it. And the only thing what we can influence is our way of play. And that starts with be a team, uh, stick together and 
have a, a structure uh, out of a good concept. And when you do that and you work hard, then you give, uh, get your confidence by yourself, the team, and also the individuals. I know we've talked a lot in this interview about some of your qualities, being modest, being humble, but also having belief. So, so like when the approach from Manchester United first happens, and, and you've seen since Sir Alex Ferguson, a lot of great managers have tried to get this club back to where they think they should be. What made you look at it and think, yeah, I, even though it hasn't quite worked for whoever, I can do that? Uh, I can do that. I have to, um, to lead it, but we have to do it together. And it starts, what you just said, with, with belief uh, uh, that we can do it. Concept, hard work. What have you made of the work you've done so far in the transfer window? Would you describe yourself as happy with what you've done? Maybe a little bit frustrated? No, I'm not frustrated at all. And first of all, I think we have a squad and we already make progress. Uh, we are more proactive uh, than we are in the start. Um, and the second is the, the players who we um, now uh, signed are really, are really happy with it. Uh, they all already, uh, you can see that they can contribute to strengthen the squad. And the last thing is we know what we want. And it's not about signing players, it's about signing the right players. And so we are really um, uh, uh, planning it careful. And we are really, we are strict to that and hard working to get the right players in, to construct a good squad, a squad uh, who can win games. Frankie de Jong, the right type of player, can you tell us anything about that? Uh, I don't if you can't, you can't. No, I can't. I don't talk about a player who is not under contract in Manchester United. OK. I just have one on Cristiano Ronaldo, because a lot of the talk at the moment is about what he wants to do. You've talked a lot about the modern style of football you want to play, the pressing. For him now, as great a player as he's been, how does he fit in with what you want to do and the style of football you want to play? I think he can, <laughs> but it starts with he has to get fit. He just started, and uh, he is uh, he's a fantastic uh, football player. <laughs> he proved it so many times. <laughs> and but you get always um, uh, be judged by what you are now, <laughs> what you are presenting now, um, performing now. So uh, the team and uh, and Cristiano by himself. Uh, has to prove it. Okay. I have to go back for one last question that I forgot at the time. When you were a young coach, coming through obviously, um, you worked with Pep Guardiola at Bayern Munich, with Steve McLaren at Twente. So I just wondered, those two, maybe other guys as well, as you started out on your coaching path, who were the guys you really learned from? I think you learn from a lot. And yeah, I said already in the, in, during the this interview, I, I talked about Case Reifers, I talked about Johan Cruyff, and so there are many eh, you can learn from. But I think it's important as a coach that you pick up the right things, what fits with you, and so that you are, uh, uh, you introduce and you form an own style. And that is what you have to do, something what suits to you. Okay, thank you for your time. Please.